So, the video I initially had in mind for today is going to take a bit more time than I anticipated. And uh, as well, all of the, to get a hold of like the movie I want to talk about today as well. So, my plan B is to talk about, although I'm anticipating within the next 30 days, I think it's going to be one of my most anticipated films this holiday season. So here's a brief discussion on on the Marvels. So let's begin. The film serves as the a sequel to 2019's Captain Marvel, as well as the Miss Marvel event series, which also and it reunites it's both both Carol Danvers, played by Bray Larson, and Nick Fury, played by Samuel L. Jackson. As well as brings in um, Kamala Khan, Khan played by I, Iman Vellani, and Monica Photon Rambo, played by Tayona Paris, who is with a film, film being directed and co written by Nia DeCosta, uh, who is responsible for the 2021 Candyman, a film which I have been meaning to watch and talk about, and I think this might be a good time to any, but I'm getting ahead of myself. I am no expert on the comics, nor do I claim to be, but as someone who enjoyed the last film and felt it fit right in, and with the showier, or effect-driven, and um, comic films, uh, superhero films of the 90s, like it was set in the vein of Batman and the Power Rangers movie. movie. This one definitely had, I was wondering if they're going to kind of keep going forward with that idea or or bring the set into this time period. period. Looks like they're kind of doing both with the use of Beast of Wars Intergalactic heck, and the whole swapping police every time they use their powers and the really putting leaning into like the multiverse aspect of this era of the franchise nice. and I definitely I'm open to it and even though I'm not expecting to do the same come out of numbers the last movie did it using Wakanda Forever last year as a era as like a yardstick I think I think a 700 million plus worldwide take should be expected with the whole Veterans Day weekend opening, which is not a bad time to movie all, all the god day off, man. Off so. And even with concerns about the franchise genre fatigue, well, I think that what they presented so far should stand out enough. Of, and again, like with Godzilla and Bone, it's reached a stage where there's got enough people to stand by it. And where even like the last Wall Street entries still have stuff that's at least interesting. And the hints of how they're going to bring in the X-Men, Fantastic Four, and Diff and other characters in the Foxverse are getting heavier. I have not seen the second season of Loki yet, but I will be very soon. Count on that. Not even getting into like the runtime. I'm still have yet, having yet to be fully confirmed as I record this. I mean, it could be anywhere from 105 to 140 minutes, which either way, I, even if when the movies are above two hours or so, they still don't feel like way. Like they're fast paced, fun, and tend to fly higher, further, and faster. Her, and. I definitely don't mind the whole willingness to experiment meant post the Infinity Saga uh, and even defended Phase 4 as it was happening with the whole throw everything in the wall and seeing what sticks phase main is whether it's like a spy thriller, a martial arts fantasy story, a generation spanning epic, a workplace legal comedy, and as one of the characters showing but this movie like a a coming based towards equal parts Disney Channel and all tween dramedy and something like Scott Pilgrim in terms of his presentation. I actually rewatched that series on ABC as one of the more interesting side effects of the strikes going on, like 
the writers just finally ratified their deal. Hopefully, SAG after will be next because otherwise, things are gonna get very interesting for the schedule going forward. Yeah, and on that note, I don't feel I need to get personal with the detractors at all, or those people who are getting like that away online or other filmmakers. I mean, but. I will say, just briefly, simply not being this franchise in itself, to me, is not a selling point. I mean, I mean, to me, that's no different than anything else in the marquee, personally. I mean, it has to really stand out, out in order to really get people invested, I would not argue. I mean, since it's not the only Temple franchise I'm into, let alone the only, only in studio I'm into either. I mean, heck, I was a very high chance I might cover like the, like the Nicolas Cage A24 her film. Um, if I can find somewhere that's showing it. It's still limited release though. Hopefully it'll be in wide release soon. I'll keep an eye on it. Still, I can definitely still stand by the fact that I'm interested in both like the smaller Indie fair as much as I am to like a film that costs upwards of two hundred million dollars, at minimum, gross or net. Let's just say that I don't think the Cage movie is going to be having the same kind of collabs like McDonald's or Funko Pop like this one would be, but it's okay. Still need to get too huffy about it at all. Anyway, that's all I'd say for now. I will be seeing this movie when it opens, and given what I just found out about how, John, you'll have your video on the uni situation very, very soon. That'll be all for now. Take care, everyone. Mm.